Welcome to Chasing Aesthetics, where fitness meets science. Uh, let's get into the second part of the podcast, and we will cover a few things that I think might be interesting for, for the audience. So, uh, first of all, um, we would like to address exercise selection for hypertrophy. Uh, if the stimulus to fatigue ratio and the mind-muscle connection are really uh, a thing to consider or they are just like, uh, I don't know, things that people say to sell their program or <laughs> let's talk about it. Yeah, so I will do my best here. So you might have to, you know, bring me in the reins if I go off track here, but for exercise selection, for bodybuilding training, I think that the most important thing to think about is what we're actually trying to do with our exercises. And for bodybuilding, what we're trying to do is provide a sufficient stress to the muscle to grow. So exercises are tools to place that stress on the muscle, place that tension on the muscle to cause an overloading stimulus for muscle growth. So this basically makes the point that there's not inherently anything special about any particular exercise and there's, there's no reason that you have to do a certain exercise. That said, there's, there's certain exercises that are probably a little bit more conducive to an, a nice overloading stressful stimulus. For example, a set of back squats is probably going to provide much more of a stress to your quads than a single set of leg extensions. Now, that doesn't mean that you couldn't still grow your, grow your quads by just doing leg extensions. You just probably have to do more total, total sets because each set is going to be a little bit less stressful. So by considering that more compound lifts, more multi-joint movements are a little bit more stressful on a per set basis, it might be a good idea to make sure that the majority of the exercises in your training program are these more basic barbell, dumbbell, multi-joint compound movements, just because these tend to be a little bit more overloading and it prevents you from having to go in there and do something like 20 sets of leg extensions just to get a good stimulus for your quads or something like that. So that's usually a little bit more efficient way to do this. Now, something you also mentioned was the stimulus to fatigue ratio. So basically, this is the ratio to, of how stimulating an exercise is for your muscle compared to how fatiguing the exercise is just kind of systemically, centrally on your body. And I think a good example of this is probably something like deadlifts. So deadlifts probably have a pretty, pretty solid stimulus for your hamstrings, your lower back, your lats, all that sort of thing. But on the flip side, they also have quite a bit of fatigue. They bring, bring with them, you know, after a set of deadlifts, usually you feel pretty dang taxed. Now, if you compare that to a Romanian deadlift or a dumbbell RDL or something like that, it might have a similar amount of stimulus for the, the hamstrings, the glutes, the lats, and that sort of thing, but it might have a little bit less fatigue. So you're kind of maximizing how much stimulus you have on a per set basis compared to how fatiguing it just is overall. And theoretically, if you're able to maximize the, the muscle stimulus and minimize the total amount of general fatigue, well, then you can probably be able to train with more training stress for your specific muscles without going over like that systemic MRV, which could theoretically allow you to use a little bit more training volume and potentially grow a little bit better than if all of your stimulus to fatigue ratio. Now, I think that probably one of the most important things to consider with your stimulus to fatigue ratio is how you're actually performing the exercise. And I think that by using a full range of motion, by controlling the, the eccentric phase a little bit, 
but still being nice and forceful on the concentric, so the lifting phase. That's a good way to maximize that stimulus to fatigue ratio because to compare like, let's say you do a set of deadlifts like more, more so like a, a bodybuilder might do them. So you really make sure to engage your lats. You control the eccentric more. You use a nice full range of motion compared to a set of deadlifts that a power lifter might do to where maybe they're trying to decrease that range of motion as much as possible. They're not controlling the eccentric at all. And they're just kind of lifting as much weight as they can. I think that the, the more power lifter style is probably going to incur a lot more fatigue and a lot less stimulus compared to the more quote unquote bodybuilding style of doing that lift. And I think that the more the technique of controlling the weight through a full range of motion is going to have a lot better stimulus to fatigue ratio and result in more muscle growth over, over the long term there. So does that kind of set the grounds there pretty well for kind of what your question was there? Yeah, of course. And, and I agree. I mean, uh, uh, for example, I think that, uh, let's say, um, maybe the squat, even though it will bring you a lot of like um, benefits to hypertrophy in terms of the whole leg, maybe for developing just the quads is more specific to that like the the leg extensions for example uh if you do uh, a deadlift it might not be the best exercise for developing the back since you're not uh like bringing a good stimulus to the back you're bringing more fatigue because uh the range of motion uh it's different from maybe uh a pullover in yeah like a pull a pullover with a straight bar right so uh, I think that uh, if your focus is bodybuilding, uh, you need to mainly focus on that uh, stimulus and not that much on the, on the fatigue, even though they are both important. Yep, absolutely. I think that, you know, uh, a lot of bodybuilders can, you know, get caught up in trying to lift as much weight as possible. And I think that, that can be a path to just resulting in a lot more fatigue and a lot less stimulus. Because if you start getting ultra concerned on lifting more and more weight, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't try to get stronger and try to lift more weight. I absolutely think that that's a good idea. As long as you do that with consistent controlled technique through a full range of motion. But if you start getting to the point to where you're, you're cutting range of motion and say you're doing leg presses and you're just kind of bouncing back and forth on a short range of motion, then you're really at that point not adding a ton of muscle stimulus and you're more so just fatiguing your body by trying to use all that weight. And I think that if you're able to get more of a muscle stimulus out of less load, then it's probably a decent idea because that's going to result in a little bit less just central fatigue and more of that muscle stimulus there. So uh, I think you covered it like perfectly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that the audience can understand it pretty well. So uh, now... Don't forget to rate the podcast on iTunes and leave a review. May the aesthetics be with you.